Good morning, good Sunday worship service to you this day. It is good to be with you. My name is Jennifer Jaimez and I serve St. Mark's United Church of Christ in Bloomington, Minnesota. If the service feeds your spirit or offers you hope, please feel free to tell others about it and share the link. It, as well as all our other worship services, can be found on St. Mark's Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel, located under St. Mark's UCC, Bloomington, Minnesota. We also have a website, stmarksuccmn.org. On our website, you can learn more about our church and some of our outreach to the community, as well as view some of the more recent worship services. This morning, I have two greetings to share with you. The first is from Laura, and the second is from the Santiago family. Good morning, all. Hello. Miss you all. <laughs> Hi, St. Mark's family. This is Leah and Isabella out here on our patio. Matt couldn't make it today because he's fixing airplanes still, but we miss you guys. We hope to see you all soon. And Isabella is growing up nice and big here, so she can't wait to meet the St. Mark's family. And we are just chilling. She is 10 weeks old now, so we are cruising through this growing and as you can see she has a very wobbly head so we are growing up strong though and can't wait to see everybody again it was good to see you both Jean wanted me to remind you that any articles for our monthly newsletter the messenger are due on the 25th by midnight so if you have any articles to include please send them to him directly via his email. With all of that being said, I invite you to take a breath in and a breath out to prepare your heart and mind for worship this day. If you have a bulletin, please join me in the call to worship. Otherwise, I invite you to hear these words. God gives us one day at a time long enough for laughter to follow any tears, deep enough for prayer and silence to dance together, time enough to help someone in need, plenty of time to notice beauty and praise the maker, sufficient time to build a bridge for forgiveness or tear down a wall of resentment, the right time to embrace friends, Smile at strangers, play with children, sing praise to God. Praise God for this day that we have been given. Let us join our voices in the opening hymn, This is the Day. Dan? Thank you. 
Thanks, Dan. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God of love, plant us in the soil of your grace. Use the implements of your grace and mercy to churn up and cast out what is foreign and hurtful. Leave nothing undone to help us be fruitful. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, the vine of everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us today and all days. Abide in us that we may abide in you and live in your love so that you may find us to be just the kind of vineyard you envisioned us to be. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another in the prayer of confession. And again, if you have a bulletin, please join along. If not, then I invite you to pray this prayer of confession with me. Heavenly teacher, we do not always pray as we ought. Help us to speak our truth and to listen for your forgiveness. When we pray our Father in heaven, but forget to embrace all people as your children, When we say, your kingdom come, without working for your kingdom on earth. When we ask for our daily bread, but do not recognize it as your gift. When we, when we request forgiveness for ourselves, but fail to pardon others. When we plead not to be led into times of trial, but walk willingly into temptation. When we honor you with our lips, but fail miserably with our lives. O oh Lord, forgive us. Help us to pray unceasingly that we may be transformed by the renewing power of your spirit. Create spaces in our prayer that we might hear and live out your words back to us. Words of love, of justice, of grace, of forgiveness. Amen. I invite you to a moment of silent confession. Amen. Hear these words of assurance that when we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, does indeed forgive us of sin and invites us to live life anew. Friends, believe the gospel that in Christ we are forgiven. This is good news indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are a loved and forgiven people, and because of that, we can have peace in our hearts. I invite you now to share the peace of Christ with those nearby with a handshake or embrace, or if you are by yourself this day, give yourself a hug. Alone or together, may we all feel the peace of Christ this day and every day. Amen. It is time for the children's sermon, and so I invite you young people to come a little bit closer to the screen so that we might see one another. And hello to all of you. When I was young, the way I learned the alphabet was by saying it over and over again. Do you already know the whole entire alphabet, all 26 letters? How did you learn it? I learned it by singing. And sometimes I still need to sing it when I can't remember which letter comes after which. And this is a lot of years later. Do you know the alphabet song? Do you want to sing it with me? Are you ready? Adults, you can sing it with me too. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Won't you come and sing with me? How'd you do? Did you get it? Sometimes I like to do it really slow. Sometimes I like to do it really fast. Learning the alphabet just takes lots of practice, and you do it over and over again. And if 
You keep doing it. It won't be too long before you have memorized it, where you know it by heart. You don't have to think so hard. Now, which letter is it that comes after C? Ah, it's the letter D. Knowing the alphabet comes in handy. You'll use it your whole life. Did you practice the prayer that we talked about last week? Do you know that one by heart yet? I'm still working on it. And so you might remember that we're going to pray this same prayer for each of the four weeks so that we might know it by heart. We might have memorized it. So let's practice because that's really how you learn it, practicing. So I'll say a line and then I invite you to repeat it after me. For this new morning and its light, for rest and shelter of the night, for health and food, for love and friends, for every gift your goodness sends. We thank you, gracious God. How'd you do? Did you have it? I'm still working on it. Sometimes when I want to learn something by heart, I print it out and then I put it on my computer or I put it on my mirror in the bathroom or sometimes I put it on the refrigerator and that way every time I pass by it I see it and then I repeat it and it gets easier and easier and easier each time so that might be something that you want to try as we're learning this prayer together so thank you for practicing with me thank you for singing with me if you did remember you are loved by God And prayer is how we have that conversation with God to say thank you or to say help. It is a beautiful thing. Thanks for coming up, and I hope to see you next week where we'll be even better at praying this prayer. Before I read the scripture for this day, I have just a couple comments that I wanted to say beforehand. The prayer, this Lord's Prayer that we're focusing in on for the next four weeks, was originally spoken in Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke. Just in case you forgot, Jesus didn't speak in English. In fact, none of what we call scripture was originally spoken or written in English. The Old Testament was first spoken and written in Hebrew and then translated into Greek, and the New Testament was written primarily in Greek altogether. It is not the translation it is the translation of these original languages into English that we get our various similar but in not exactly same versions of the scriptures. I was hoping that each of the four weeks that we are spending time with the Lord's Prayer, I could send and recite a different translation of the same reading. However, I learned this week that two of the versions I wanted to share were under copyright protection. All Bible translations, 1925 and later, are copyrighted. It's not that the Bible is so much copyrighted per se, but rather the work of the translators. The NRSV and the Common English Bible have granted permission to live stream and publish their versions during this pandemic. The King James Version that many of you grew up with was published pre-1925, and so it is now considered public domain. With all of that being said, I will use the NRSV version primarily, but I encourage you to dig out all those different versions of the Bible that you may have at home And look up the scriptures in those different translations. Sometimes the differences are minor, but sometimes they are quite different. And sometimes when they're quite different, it can shed a new understanding, a new light on a very familiar passage. So I invite you now to hear the scripture from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, NRSV version. He was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time 
of trial. This ends today's reading. The sermonette this day is titled, Teach Us to Pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Last week we addressed the first part of our prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And this week we will focus on this next part of the prayer, Your kingdom come. It seems pretty short. Where's the rest of it, really? Where's the part that says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? If you have a study Bible, you will see a little notation after the phrase, your kingdom come, in Luke 11.2. The rest of that phrase is not found in all ancient manuscripts of the Gospel of Luke, and because there isn't agreement, it is left as a footnote. The rest of the phrase is, however, found in the Gospel of Matthew. So although Luke doesn't include it, Matthew does, and consequently, so do we. And we will include it on our reflection this day. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there was a kingdom that was ruled by an evil and malevolent king. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there was a kingdom that was ruled by a kind and benevolent king. The land of kingdoms and kings and, of course, princesses and princes seem so far away from our reality, more like fairy tales, really. But perhaps it is our fascination with this from very young age that so many in this country are enamored with these stories. Maybe it's why we're so enamored, so many of us, with the royal family in England. When Prince Harry married Meghan Markle, it is estimated that 29.2 million Americans watched that wedding early on the morning of May 18th, 2018, over two years ago. Were you one of them? Or did you perhaps watch Prince Charles marry Diana? June 29th, 1981. That one just made me feel old. We certainly read of kings and kingdoms in the scriptures. In fact, the whole book of kings in the Old Testament is where we read that almost without exception, one king ruled after another, doing more evil in the sight of the people than the one that came before them. We read of kings oppressing their people, enslaving them, and casting them out, discarding them. Not only that, we read that these kings then led many of their people to do the same. If the king can do it, then so can I. We read of kings who only serve themselves and those closest to them. I guess some things never change. Even the best, the most well-loved king in Israel's memory and history, King David, was far from perfect. Yes, he united the tribes into one nation, brought peace to the land, secured materials so that his son Solomon might finally build the temple. But David also coveted another man's wife and had Bathsheba's husband killed in battle so that David might have her all to himself. So what does it mean when Jesus says to pray, your kingdom come? What is God's kingdom? Is it different than history and experience suggest? Yes. It begins with Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. The Ten Commandments lay out what it means to be in relationship with God and one another. God will be their God and they will worship and give their loyalty to that God alone and no other. They will honor God's name. They will observe the Sabbath so that they might be reminded that it is not they that makes the world go round. They will love one another. They will not covet. They will not bear false witness. They will honor their parents. They will not cheat or lie or steal. They will not kill one another. Observe these so that you might truly live so that others may know that you are my people, says God, and I will be your God. God is king and the people is God's beloved children. 
Yet we know it doesn't take long after Moses gives the Israelites these Ten Commandments before they're dissatisfied with their lot in life and they break all sorts of commandments and thus break their relationship with God and with one another. The prophets have a vision of the kingdom of God too. It is one where justice flows like water and righteousness like an unfailing stream found in the words of Amos. Or the words of Micah, it is one where all are called to love justice and seek kindness and walk humbly with God. Jesus continues this preaching of the kingdom of God, a kingdom where those who are poor and who are hungry are fed and satisfied. Those who are mourn, those who mourn are comforted. Those who are reviled because of Jesus' name are lifted up. Those who are meek and not in positions of power and authority are heard. Those who are pure in heart shall see God. Those who are left out, ostracized, excluded, are welcomed to the table to sit and eat with the Son of God. God's kingdom is radically opposed to the kingdom of Caesar. God's kingdom is radically opposed to the kingdoms of our times as well. The kingdom of God is what we hope for, what we long for, what we wait for. The kingdom of God is someday, but it is also today. Jesus coming into the world inaugurated the kingdom of God here and now. And it will be complete when Christ comes again to judge the living and the dead. For some, the word kingdom has so much baggage that it is no longer useful or helpful. And many years ago, a new word began to be used. Rather than use the patriarchal, hierarchical language of kingdom, the word kingdom has come into common usage. And I'm not sure who first coined it. It certainly wasn't me, but I really like it. It suggests that in God's kingdom, we relate to one another as you would kin, family. If we are all beloved children of God, then we are all kin to one another as well. It is obvious that God's kingdom is a work in progress. We are not there yet. We have a long ways to go. Yet when we live and act in love toward one another, we are living out the kingdom of God. The next phrase is, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is God's will? Does anyone know for sure? There are many things that are attributed to God's will. This coronavirus is being attributed to God's will by some. Cancer is attributed to God by some. Same with hurricanes or car accidents, sudden infant death syndrome, you name it. All caused by God's will. All for the purpose of teaching, strengthening, testing, breaking. I could go on and on. You've heard me say this before, but I don't believe it. I don't believe God wants anyone to be diagnosed with cancer or any other disease. I don't believe God causes car accidents or natural disasters or any other harmful thing that happens to us. And while there are many who understand tragedy and hardship and heartache to be an act of God, this has never been something I could hold on to. So what is God's will? Much of what I just said about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, applies here as well. And since this is supposed to be a sermonette, I won't repeat everything I just said. You're welcome. I believe that the will of God in its simplest form is that we love God and love one another. Jesus showed us the way to true life. Jesus lived and died and was raised from the dead so that we might have eternal life, life with the eternal here, now, and in the time to come. God desires for us to trust and believe in Christ. God desires the best for us, wants the best for us, wills the best for us. And God has set before us the ways of life and death and hopes that we will choose the ways of life. But that is the thing. It is a choice. God created us with the ability to choose, the ability to say yes 
and the ability to say no. So much of the heartache and hardship of this world in which we live is due to our choices, is due to the choices that others have made, sometimes generations ago. And I think some of those choices grieve God. The killing of God's children grieves God. The exploitation of the land and of people grieves God. The greed and corruption and hate that exists grieves God. As disciples of Jesus, we seek to walk in Christ's ways, ways of welcome and acceptance, ways of generosity and kindness and mercy and compassion. And we pray that our will might be in accordance to God's will all the days of our lives. So with all of this being said, we can pray. Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom, Lord, not our kingdom. Our kingdoms are so filled with oppression and greed and sadness and loss and exclusion and division and war and injustice. But your kingdom, your kingdom is altogether different. Your kingdom is one where is one where all are invited to the table of plenty to take and eat and drink so that they may no longer be hungry or thirsty. Your kingdom takes instruments of war and turns them into instruments of peace. In your kingdom, the lion lays down with the lamb. In your kingdom, there is a place for all people to live together, to love together, to work together and worship you together. In your kingdom, no one is considered unimportant, unworthy, expendable. Sometimes, O oh God, we can't see beyond the kingdoms of our own world. Help us to see this world with your eyes and to work toward bringing your kingdom to this world in which we live. Thy will be done. Thy will, O oh God, not the will of the neighbors down the street, nor the will of popular culture or even counterculture, not the will of my close friends, not even the will of my family, but your will, O oh God. Sometimes it is hard to discern what you would have me do. Sometimes it is difficult to know which way to go. Help us to pray that we might always seek to follow your way, even when it challenges or threatens those closest to us. Help us to hold fast to your way, especially when the going is tough. Help us to find and know your will for our lives. Help us to know that if we fall from following your way, you will not give up on us, but will seek us out and bring us back time and time again. On earth as it is in heaven. All the heavenly beings worship you without ceasing. They trust in you and follow in your ways. Yet you created us with the ability to choose and you set before us the ways of life and death. You so desire us to choose life. And so often we choose death. Death to our truth selves. Death to our full potential. We so often say no to hope, to trust, to love. Help us to be like the heavenly host. Help our lives in this place reflect what our lives will be like in heaven with you. Help us work toward this world reflecting more of your world, a world of peace and justice for all people, a world of rejoicing and praising you all our days. May it be so. Amen. God has blessed us with so much. With grateful hearts, we offer not only the fruits of our financial resources, but our very selves as well. May our offerings bring God's light and love and word to those who need it most. I give thanks for your generosity. We'll continue this day with a time of silent prayer where we offer before God all those who are in need of God's healing, God's comfort, God's peace. And then after a time of silence, I'll join us together in the words of a pastoral prayer. So let us be in a time of silence.
Holy God, we thank you for hearing all our prayers, those named aloud and those whispered only to you in the quiet of our hearts. We give thanks that you always hear all our prayers. You know all our worries and uncertainties and fears and that you carry our burdens with and for us each and every day. Holy God, as we continue to live in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst of strangeness, help us to lean into you so that we do not lose trust. Help us to recall your faithfulness time and time again. Be with us as we continue to navigate unfamiliar territory. Help us to not give in to despair. Guide us with wisdom. And let us be convinced to do what we need to do for the sake of all of us, even when inconvenient or uncomfortable. When we are frustrated, grant us patience. When we are tired, grant us rest. We continue to pray for all those whom we know and love, those who are in need of strength or healing or wisdom or peace or employment or safety or comfort. We also pray for all those we do not know who are also in need. Help us to be your hands and feet in this world of ours. Help us to live our lives so that others may know us by our love. We also pray for our world where there is so much unrest, so little peace, so much need. We pray for the leaders of this nation and this world where they make decisions that affect all of their people, not just some. We pray that they might be open to the cries of all and work toward peace. We also pray for all of those families and children and teachers and staff that are being so affected by decisions being made for this upcoming school year, whether it be K through 12 or the different colleges. We pray for all of those who don't know what tomorrow will bring, who make plans and then have to change them, who make adjustments and then have to do it again and again. We are all in the midst of an uncertain time and we pray that Rather than acting out in frustration and anger, we might live into a time of understanding and patience, but it is so hard. Be especially with all those families being affected by these decisions regarding school. Grant them patience, grant them wisdom to make the decisions that they need to be made and the flexibility to perhaps change those as times change. Remind us each and every day to offer you thanks. Thanks for the many blessings, the gift of life and breath, the gift of one another, the gift of food and shelter, the gift of your love. Help us to lean into you and one another in the days yet to come. Help us to trust that you are with us and that we truly dwell in your house and that your love never lets us go. Holy God, hear all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, and hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Pray then this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join our voices in the last hymn of this day. It is Go, My Children, With My Blessing. Dan?
Thanks, Dan. Now hear the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you peace this day and forevermore. And together let us all say, Amen. God's peace be with you. We'll see you next week.